Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Rosemary and I'm a crafter, a doll maker, and a sewer. And lately what we've been doing is we've been doing some classes on how to use your sewing machine. During the whole COVID mess, um, a lot of classes have been canceled. I actually work at a sewing machine store and my classes there have been canceled and I want people to be able to use their sewing machines, especially since sewing is going through a huge boom right now and everybody wants to know how to sew. So this is the third in a series of classes that I've been doing on using your brother's sewing machine. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the stretch stitches that are in your sewing machine. The first thing that is really important that you know is that when you work with stretchy fabrics, you should always use um, a stretch needle. And I talked a little bit about stretch needles in one of my other videos, but I wanted to kind of um, remind you that with stretch fabrics, it's really important to use a stretch needle. If you use a sharp needle like a denim needle, it's going to damage the knit. If you use a universal needle, sometimes it works because it's slightly dull and it won't damage the knit, but sometimes it'll hit the elastic in the fabrics and it'll start to skip stitches. Um, we used to always call a stretch needle a skip-free needle. So if you're having troubles with skipping stitches, always put a stretch needle in. Um, but it is important, and I'll be honest with you, I did a little research to actually figure out why a stretch needle works better on stretch fabrics. And most, most videos say to switch to a switch needle, but they don't... Uh, to switch to a stretch needle, but they don't explain why. So um, I guess over the years that I have been teaching sewing, I've basically just told people that a stretch needle will always work best. Ballpoint needles are dull, and what they do is they come down and they find the hole in the fabric rather than piercing the fabric they push through. They were really popular during the stretch and sew days when our moms were taking classes on how to sew on double knits and they worked pretty good. But our fabrics have changed a lot over the years. They're a lot stretchier. There's stretch velvets, there's stretch knits, there's stretch suede, there's even stretch denims that actually have elastic in the fabric and a stretch needle is going to work a whole lot better. So on my table here, I've got a couple of different kinds of stretch fabrics. This is a, uh, a t-shirt knit. It stretches um, in both directions. Um, so a stretch needle is going to work a whole lot better on this. We're actually going, going to make a little uh, t-shirt dress out of this. Um, this is like a stretch velour. Um, and it's very soft, but it's also very, very stretchy. It only stretches one direction. So this way stretches and this way doesn't. Whenever you use something that has a stretch in one direction, make sure the stretch goes around the body and that the part that doesn't stretch goes down so it doesn't start to grow as you're wearing it and get longer and longer. And then also it'll go up over your head as you go to pull it around. So this fabric is called Polar Fleece or Blizzard Fleece. And it doesn't really look like a knit when you look at it, but it's very, very stretchy. And it is a knit. And it does so better when you use a stretch needle with it. And you see it a whole lot in the fabric stores for making blankets, but you can make jackets out of it. You can even make pajamas out of it. They have some with really cute prints on it. I uh, usually buy mine in browns because I make these dolls with it. It stuffs very nicely and makes a nice, soft, cuddly doll, and I can embroider on the face. I am going to do a video in the future on how to make these dolls because we make these for charity, and I want a lot of my ladies to know how to make the dolls if they want to do it at home. So keep an eye out for that video um, because it should be a lot of fun on how to make a doll. Sorry, this one doesn't have any hair. She will eventually have hair and be all finished up and ready to give away to a children in crisis. So the other fabric I wanted to show you is called ribbing or rib knit. And it's getting harder and harder to find in fabric stores. You'll see this one is a tube. Um, that's kind of one of the ways you know that it's ribbing is it's sold in a tube like this. This one does not have deep grooves in it. 
this white one does. It has very uh, prominent grooves in it, which is why it's called rib knit, um, because of the ribs that are in it. And it's what you see on the top of t-shirt necklines, on the bottom of cuffs of some jackets, or the bottom of pajama pants. And we're going to do a project today that's going to show you how to use ribbing so that you can um, make your own t-shirts if you want to, or um, other projects, which I'll go into detail a little bit more um, as we get to the sewing machine. So let's just do that. Let's go to the sewing machine and let's start sewing. So I know I just said that we're, we're going to go to the sewing machine, but I forgot to do something. I wanted to show you um, some patterns that are out there. When you go looking for patterns, you want to find something that actually says on the back of the pattern that is good for knits. And I found these the other day at the store um, and they uh, say they're for kids and they are specifically for knit fabric, so they work well. So this one is really cute. Um, this one is actually a pajama pattern, but it is made for a stretch knit, so it should work pretty good for just making a basic little t-shirt, or you could make pajamas with it if you want to. So those are both really good patterns. If you want to really take on making stretch knit t-shirts, um, go look for these patterns and that'll get you started. One of the good things is that it, it says they're easy and they are very easy to use. Um, but before we even start trying to make a t-shirt, um, I wanted to show you a really easy project. There are those of you out there who are never going to want to make a t-shirt. You can buy them really inexpensively at the store and it seems like a lot of work for something that, that you might not that be, be that interested in. But here's a project that you might find is really fun to do. This is a basic little towel that I have purchased at a, a discount store and I went ahead with my embroidery machine and I embroidered this cute little scarecrow on it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the towel and I'm going to fold it in half and then I'm going to fold the top part down just a little bit like this and I'm going to cut a circle So that made a circle. That's what I want to do. And then I'm going to take my rib knit and I'm going to cut it in a long strip um, about two inches wide. So you want to do that with your ribbing. I also did it with the gray so that we can put it on the little dress we're going to make. So that should get us started. So now let's go to the sewing machine and I'm going to show you a couple of different kinds of techniques. So this is my Brother 2500D. It's a little bit older model, um, but most of the Brother screens are pretty much the same from one machine to the next. If you don't have a big screen like this, you'll find that the stitches are still pretty much the same. So um, if I, this is my utility page, and if I use the arrows to scroll through the pages, um, I have a, a stitch that looks like this. Uh, it has a straight stitch and a zigzag with it that works great as a stretch stitch. On my machine, it's number 116. Um, 118 is also a great overlocking stitch because it goes straight and then it goes over. And then 119 pretty much does the same thing, except for the little dash that's on here is saying that the needle's going to stop in the middle. It's not going to make a long stitch. It's going to make a couple of short stitches, which makes it so it, it finishes off the edge really nicely. So if you have any of those stitches, those really work good for this first project that we're going to do. So before we sew this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of ribbing that I cut and I'm going to um, measure a size that's slightly smaller than the circle and or wrap it around the baby's head and figure out exactly how big um, we want this ribbing to be. And I sewed it right down the side here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that seam inside So the whole piece of ribbing is folded in half and the, the seam that I made is hidden on the inside. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to take my towel and we're going to do what's called quartering. So what you do is you lay it on your circle that you cut. All three layers, 
the towel and the two folded edges and you pin it and then you pull it across to the other side of the circle and you pin it again so that makes sure that it's measured perfectly across and then we're going to pull it this way and that's why it's called quartering because we're going to do all four corners first so that we don't have more stretch on one side than we do on the other and then after I've quartered it then I'm going to give it a good stretch and I'm going to pin in between each one of those pins. So I have my ribbing and my towel. Everything is lined up under the needle. I want to try and use the edge of my foot as kind of like a guide to keep me straight. If you've never done overlocking before, it, it's probably a good idea. And then you can always trim any of the excess off. It's kind of hard to pull on the fabric and stretch it and um, keep it straight at the same time. So we've got on that number 118 stitch, and you can see that the machine goes forward and back and, o and goes over the side at the same time. Now the important part is that this, the ribbing has to be stretched. So that's, we have to kind of pull on it a little bit and line it up with the edge so that all three layers get sewn together at the same time. And the back and forth motion is what leaves the stretch in. I'm going to stop and pull my pin. I don't want to sew over my pins. And I also want to check and make sure all three layers are lined up. And then we're just going to let it go and sew right over the edge of that. And we're going to keep going like that all the way around that ribbing so that it is actually sewn to the edge of the hole that we cut in our towel. Okay. So I put the ribbing on it. On the inside, um, it, it the edges are completely finished, and it looks almost like we did it with a serger. Some of my towel pieces are sticking out here, but I can go back with my scissors and trim that off right up to the edge of the rib net, and it'll look like I did it on a serger. And if I open it up like this, now I have a little baby bib. Um, with my uh, scarecrow on it. You can give this as gifts to young mothers. They absolutely love them. They're great for toddlers and even some grown-up people who need a bib and could use a really cute little picture on it. So that's something fun that you can do with your stretch knits on your sewing machine, even if you don't want to make t-shirts. But let's go ahead and start making that little t-shirt dress that I was talking about, and I'll show you some techniques you can do with your sewing machine. With Before I start to um, put this little dress together, I wanted to do a quick video on how to embroider on knits. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you can um, fast forward through this and not know, uh, watch it. But those of you who do have an embroidery machine, it's very important to know how to embroider on knits, especially very stretchy knits. And I mentioned before that this fabric is very, very stretchy. It stretches this way, it stretches this way. Um, one of the worst things that can happen is for you to spin a lot of money on a knit and this knit actually did cost me close to twenty dollars a yard i used a coupon on it but it still is kind of an expensive knit and i don't want to mess it up so um it if you embroider on it wrong and you don't use the right stabilizer it'll come out all wobbly and bumpy and it doesn't look nice so one of the first things that you want to do is you want to use no show mesh uh, that's the Floriani's name for it. Some of the other stabilizers have other names, but basically it's a cutaway stabilizer that's very thin and very strong. And you want to put that on the back. I prefer an iron-on, but I don't have an iron-on right now. So I'm going to use KK2000, which is a temporary spray. And I'm going to spray the stabilizer. And then I'm going to put that on the back of my knit fabric 
and that's going to be permanent. It's never going to go away. I can, after I finish embroidery, uh, pull it up and, and cut away the parts that I don't want. But the rest of it's going to stay in it so when it's washed, it doesn't stretch out and make the embroidery look bad. The other thing is, even though I have the no-show mesh on there, it can still get stretched out while I'm putting it in the hoop. So I'm not going to put it in the hoop. And I showed you this a little bit the last time uh, when I was showing you how to do cork. But you can use the, um, the stabilizer that is a wash away on the back and then it has a paper on the top. And we're going to put just the paper in the hoop. We're going to score the paper and peel that up. And it's sticky on the back. And they do make one that's a tear away that's sticky. Um, Embellish has one that I like a whole lot that's a um, basically a wash away tear away on the back. Um, they call it um, wash away stabilizer, but it's not. Uh, complete. It doesn't dissolve completely, but it dissolves enough that most of it tears away, but the rest of it stays underneath my stitching. So I like that one a whole lot too, um, but it's also a peel off that's very sticky on the bottom. So now I'm going to take my knit on top of the no-show mesh as well, and I'm going to put that right centered in my hoop. And now I'm going to embroider the word princess across the top of this little bodice. Okay, so before we start to put this little dress together, I want to go in here and show you the stitches that um, that we're going to work with. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, go to the second page here. This is the stitch that we used before when we were making the little towel bib. This one works pretty good for putting your stitches together as well. Um, but one of the things I've noticed that uh, because this fabric is so stretchy, what it did when I worked with it the first time is it came out just a little bit wobbly and, um, and it didn't lay as flat as I'd like it to. So we want to make sure that this comes out right. So the thing that you want to do to correct that problem is go into the settings of your sewing machine. And according to where it is in your machine, it may be different. Look in your manual. In mine, I'm going to go up here into this setting here and I've got a, a button here that says pressure foot pressure and the default is three. I'm going to bring it down to one. So the pressure foot pressure, so basically the presser foot pressure means how hard the foot comes down on the feed dogs. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera just a little tiny bit here. This foot is going to come down on these feed dogs and grip the feed dogs and pull the fabric through. But if I don't want it to pull on it too hard so that my fabric actually stretches as I'm sewing, then I can lower my pressure foot pressure. Some of the brother machines actually have it up here in the back. Some of it have it in the settings and this one is on here. So just look in your manual and find it where it is. But lower your pressure foot pressure. That will help a little bit if your fabric is really stretchy. So another thing is after I got this cut out and embroidered on, I started to think about number one, how thin the fabric was. Um, and number two, the fact that I don't want this embroidery to be up against the baby's skin. So I cut two pieces of the, the front bodice and two pieces of the back bodice. The pattern itself tells you to cut the back bodice so that it's open and you put a zipper in it. I don't want to put a zipper in this and this fabric is so stretchy I don't need to. I can actually pull it over the top of the baby's head if I put ribbing around the neckline so that there's stretch all around it. So that's what I'm going to do. You can kind of play around sometimes with a pattern and figure out what works best for you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the shoulder seams. Here's my back piece. Here's my front piece. Put right sides together and as I said I have that stitch chosen and I've lowered my pressure foot pressure I have my machine threaded with white thread 
And so I'm just going to start sewing. And I'm going to let the fabric feed. I'm not going to force it or pull it. Just kind of let the fabric do the job and sew over the top, the edge, just like that. And then we'll use the scissors to cut it. And I'm going to do all four shoulder seams in that way. And then I'll come back. I moved the camera because I wanted you to be able to see a little bit better what I was doing. I've taken the two bodice pieces um, that I made with the shoulder seams sewed and I put them right sides together. And um, I was going to put ribbing on the top of this neckline, but I just decided it didn't look good. I'd rather have a nice smooth neckline. And because I've got an inside and an outside, that'll work really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch around the neckline and then turn it inside out. But in order to do that so that I get a good stitch, I don't want to do a straight stitch because that could possibly make it so it doesn't lay flat. I'm going to do a zigzag, but I'm going to make my zigzag... Um, really narrow probably about a 1.5 not very wide at all and stay as close to the edge as I possibly can so I don't use up too much of my neckline here The next part of this little dress is the sleeve, and we want to do it with a straight stitch, but we want to make the straight stitch just as long as you possibly can. So lengthen out your stitch to a, to a 5.0, and then stitch across the top. And then let's cut it. So something that took me absolutely years to understand is, um, you know how the patterns always tell you to do two rows of um, basting stitches to do a gathering stitch? I always thought, I don't need to do two rows. I can do it with one. It's fine. Well, I have discovered that if you do two rows of gathering on it, then when you go to pull your threads to gather it, it will lay flatter and you will find it. 10 times easier to connect it to your dress um, than it would be if you only did two rows. So go ahead and take the time and do two rows of gathering stitches. And then you're going to grab your, um, your threads and you're going to pull them. So I'm going to get both of the threads and I'm going to pull them. So that I'm pulling it like this and I'm going to, you probably can't see it because my hand's probably in the way, um, but I've gathered it up and now I'm going to pin it to my sleeve opening. One of the things that um, when you, you need to know when you're making children's clothes is if you go ahead and sew this side seam right here and then put the inset sleeve in, yes, inset sleeves do look a lot nicer, but it makes it very difficult for children's clothes, especially if you're making a really tiny baby outfit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the armhole open and flat, and then I'm going to take my sleeve and I'm going to lay it on this piece here, and I'm going to pin it and sew it in place. And I think that looks pretty good. I want to go ahead and hem the sleeves now. And I don't want to use that same stitch that I used before for the sleeves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this second menu right here um, that looks like it's mostly quilting stitches. And it's where the blind hem usually is. And this stitch that's right here makes a great hem stitch. I still want to leave my pressure foot pressure down to one so that it doesn't stretch my sleeve as it hems it. I don't want a wobbly sleeve at the end. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hem my, hem my sleeve with that.
the sleeve is still flat. I've not sewed the side seams yet. The disadvantage to that is you can see where it comes together, but it also makes it a lot easier for me to do the hem on a small little sleeve like this. So that's the way I've decided I'm going to do this. I'm just going to fold it up one time. Um, this pattern is made in such a way that there's a turn right here. So I know basically where to turn that up at. And I don't need to finish the raw edge because this is a knit. But I am going to put the foot right so that that edge of that fabric rides right down the middle of the foot. So that when it starts to do this stitch, it actually zigzags across the edge and finishes it and covers the raw edge. And I really like the way this finishes the edge and, and still leaves the stretch in the sleeve. And then all I really have to do is fold my two ends of my sleeve together and then the side seams and pin those together and then so from the sleeve all the way down to the end of the bodice creating a bodice i'm going to switch it back over to that other stitch that we used before it's over in the main menu and it's right here it's the one that does a straight and an overlock because i want to connect my two seams with a stretch stitch so that it has give it won't pop the seams and it will actually lay flatter with a stretch stitch so i'm going to use that stitch and sew this together and then when i'm finished putting the bodice together, I'm going to add the skirt to it using the same stitch, and then I'm going to hem it using um, the stitch that we used to hem the sleeves. And then I'm going to show you the little dress so you'll see what it looks like all finished. Before I show you this dress completely finished, I wanted to show you one more stitch. It's in just about any sewing machine that you purchase from the most basic one up to the top of the line. And it's this one right here. It looks like a zigzag stitch but it literally stops as it goes across so it creates three stitches in every zigzag and a lot of people refer to it as the three-part zigzag you can see the machine is saying to use the j stitch uh, foot on it it does not consider it a stretch stitch but it works very much like a stretch stitch and the reason why i'm showing this to you as um, I've already mentioned several times, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit, this fabric is very stretchy. And as I was starting to put the skirt on the bodice, I discovered that the um, overlock stitch that I was using was actually stretching my bodice out, and I don't want to do that. I want it to lay nice and flat, and it didn't matter how much I lowered the pressure foot pressure, it was doing that. So I have in the past, and I did this time, switched to that three-part zigzag, because not only because it has a zigzag, it, it works like a stretch stitch, but it, it has a nice finishing on your um, edges. And even though I'm not really sewing right on the edge, after I go around this waistline band um, and sew the skirt onto the bodice, I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim that down so that it looks like I sewed over the edge and it finishes it up really nice but the most important part is that on the other side my skirt is gonna my bodice is gonna lay really nice and um, not look homemade and stretchy on the top but still have give to it so um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'm gonna show you what the dress looks like so here's my little dress it's all finished um, as I said before, I didn't put the ribbing around the neckline. I'm really glad I didn't. I think it looks a lot nicer. And um, I did the same overlock stitch on the hem. Now, I kind of wanted to say something about that. A lot of people use a double needle, and double needle stitching is really great. But it, it's not the same as the cover hem that you see on store-bought t-shirts. The t-shirts that have a double row of stitching across the bottom of them in the store is done on a serger with a cover hem 
and it leaves the stretch in the in the fabric. Um, if you do that on your sewing machine with a double needle, it will look like a cover hem, but it will not perform like a cover hem. You will not have any stretch. In fact, this sweater that I'm wearing right now has no stretch in it at all. So I suspect that it was not done with a true cover hem machine. So if you are working with something like this, which is very, very stretchy fabric, um, I would really recommend using one of the stress stitches in your machine, and that's what I used. I used the one that I showed you on the end of the sleeve to hem the skirt, and the skirt has stretch to it, and it lays a lot flatter, and it looks really nice. So the other project that we made was the little baby bib, and I hope you enjoyed doing that, learning how to put ribbing onto the edge of something. As I said before, you don't have to make a t-shirt. You can, and you can use the exact same um, technique to put ribbing on a t-shirt, but this is a really fun project to be able to do. You can go to your local store and buy a towel that already has decorative stitches on it. In fact, right now you probably can buy a Christmas one on clearance that you can practice on and make your own bib. But if you have an embroidery machine, you could embroider something on it. You could even embroider the baby's name on it and have some fun practicing with your overlock stitches, learning how to put ribbing on. Um, but I hope you learned something about stretch knits using a stretch needle and this overlock stitches that are built into your sewing machine. If you had a good time, I hope that you like and comment. And if you have any comments or you'd like to see something special, um, that's done um, on the sewing machine, please put it in the comments and let me know and I'll see if I can't do it for you. I think next week we're going to take the brother class one more step and I'm going to show a little bit about how to use your embroidery machine. I've done a lot of videos already about the design center and adding lettering, but I really haven't gone into the really basics of editing and um, combining stitches and adding lettering to it to some of the more basic sewing machines. So if you have just purchased a new brother embroidery machine and you want to learn how to stabilize it and to put it in the hoop and embroider on it, then tune in next week because we're going to learn a bit, little bit more about how to use your embroidery machine. In the meantime, I hope you have a very happy new year and we'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>